Our forensics lesson today is focusing on searching the crime scene. So just to recap, we are moving along in our introduction to forensics unit. And previously, we learned about the seven steps of crime scene investigation. So if you haven't watched that video, that lesson, go back and watch that first and then come back and finish this one. So one of the steps in our seven steps of crime scene investigation is searching the crime scene. And when we were discussing the seven steps of crime scene investigation, I promised that uh, we would come back and revisit and elaborate on crime scene search patterns. Um, and I mentioned in that video that there's four crime scene search patterns that we're going to cover. And so today is the day we're going to dive into the four crime scene search patterns um, and talk about the procedures and how we would execute those search patterns. All right, so the crime scene is the beginning point for obtaining evidence, which will be used by the crime scene investigation team and forensic experts. A thorough investigation of the crime scene must be completed. And so one mistake that can be critical for an investigation is sloppy police work. Processes and procedures must be followed to ensure the integrity of the crime scene is maintained. Uh, and part of that is the proper searching of the crime scene. So a crime scene tells a story uh, and it's the role of an investigator to try to uh, paint the picture of that story for a jury if the investigation goes to court. Now, investigating the scene is meant to be the beginning of the process where we begin to answer questions like what happened, who did it, how did they do it, why did they do it. Uh, crime scenes can be classified by their location. So you can have primary crime scenes, secondary crime scenes. You can even have tertiary crime scenes. Uh, but a primary crime scene would be the initial location of the crime. So an example would be a victim is killed at their home. So the home would be the initial location, the primary crime scene. Uh, if the killer disposes of that victim in the woods after they kill them in their home, then we have what's called a secondary crime scene. So this is a secondary location. Um, the woods or the wooded area would be the secondary crime scene. Both the primary and the secondary crime scenes should be searched thoroughly. Now there's four goals of the crime scene search. So we're gonna go through the search patterns that investigators can use. And in all of the search patterns that we discussed today, uh, there are four goals. So number one is to recognize evidence. Investigators are gonna need to document that evidence. They of course wanna collect the evidence and then they wanna preserve that evidence. So following proper protocols and procedures at crime scenes includes legally obtaining access to the scene. And the Fourth Amendment requires that to enter a place to search and seize evidence, authorities have, have to have what's called a warrant. So a search warrant is a warrant to search a specific premise for evidence of a specific crime. Now, who is gonna provide this search warrant? Who's gonna give investigators permission to go into a place that they believe to be a crime scene? Well, the person that does this is the judge or in some cases, the magistrate. So um, the investigator will submit what's called a signed affidavit to the judge or the magistrate. The judge magistrate looks over this affidavit and determines um, whether or not they believe if they have probable cause to believe that such evidence exists based on the information that's provided to them by the investigator or police. Um, and so they will issue a search warrant and at that time uh, crime scene investigators can enter the scene. Um, there's also other circumstances that provide permission, legal permission for investigators to enter a crime scene. Um, here in the state of Georgia, uh, investigators can enter a crime scene and search a crime scene if they have permission from the homeowner. Like if it's a homeowner or business owner, um, they can have permission that way. So experienced crime scene investigators understand that there's no single way to search a crime scene. Um, they just rely on a combination of skills, training, experience, sometimes intuition, uh, and this guides the investigator to choosing the best search pattern. Now there are 
several options for search patterns, but today we're going to focus on the four major search patterns. These are the ones that are most commonly used. All right, so in the line or strip, uh, strip method. This is where investigators are going to um, divide the the search area, the crime scene, into parallel strips or lanes, uh, where one searcher is is assigned a lane and they walk very slowly down a sh uh, th on a straight line through the middle of the lane, and they're just visually covering the full width of their lane. So this is great in relatively large areas like open areas or outdoor areas. This method is one that is um, really good because it's easy to employ. The spiral method of crime scene searches requires investigators to view the scene as a circle. So the spiral search can begin at a specific point and spiral outward, or it can start on a perimeter and spiral inward. Uh, and the width of the spirals just depend on the circumstances, but should be narrow enough to ensure complete visual coverage. Remember, the goal in all four of these search patterns is to find evidence. Um, and so when you have a designated search pattern, it just helps investigators get laser focused on what they're looking for, which of course is evidence. All right, the grid method is a modified version of the line or the strip search method. So once an area has been searched by the line or strip method, the area is searched again, but perpendicular to the original lines so that both sets of lines, if they were overlaid, would form a grid like you see in the picture. Now, while this is more time consuming than the line search, uh, it is more comprehensive and it has the additional benefit of each section being searched more than once and by more than one person. The final type of search method is the zone, also known as the quadrant method. And what this does is it divides the crime scene area into logical zones that can be individually searched by investigators. So you can see here in this picture, you have a crime scene. It was divided into four quadrants, which is why it's called the quadrant method. And then four individual investigators will be assigned one of the quadrants to search. Uh, indoor crime scenes are good places to employ the zone method. All right, now remember, during the search, investigators are likely to find evidence that they didn't see in a previous step. So remember, we're talking about the seven steps of crime scene investigation. And in step three, investigators have already scanned the crime scene. They may have found evidence in this initial scanning of the crime scene. They may have marked that evidence. Um, and now what they're doing in searching the scene is they're, um, they're declaring a search pattern and they are executing the search pattern. And it is likely that they find more evidence. If they do, that evidence must be marked with an evidence marker. So you can see the evidence marker in the picture here. Photographers have to go back and photograph that evidence and sketchers also have to add that evidence to their crime scene sketches. Everything has to work together. That's part of maintaining the integrity of the crime scene. All right, that ends our searching the crime scene lesson, and I'll see you in the next lesson.